Hello. 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 We welcome you today. Hello. 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 We're glad you came our way. Just waiting for Shlis. <laughs> Here's Kara. Happy Friday, everyone. Hope you're excited. It's gonna be fun. All right, here we go. They're joining us now. I think I'm accepting. Hold on. Hello. There you are. Hi. Hey. Hi. Oh, I gotta turn up my volume. Is not prepared for this. There we go. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. How are you guys doing? Good. Fantastic. So ready for this threesome. Why is the light so weird over here? You look lovely, Shalise. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> like a bronzing. <laughs> I don't know why it's like doing that anyway. Yeah. It's so nice to meet you, Kara. I know. Hi. Hi. <laughs> That's right. You weren't in the episode with Kara, were you? No, I was not. Yeah. So how you been, Kara? So good. I'm like, I know it's like a cliche, but when you say like living your best life, I'm like legit living my best life. I just got back from Sacramento. I saw Matt Easton just join the chat. Hopefully he sticks around. Having a good time hanging out in Sacramento with Matt Easton, getting like all of the marijuana at the dispensary and having a great time in our hotel room and eating Krispy Kremes and stuff this past weekend. And my husband was there too. And just working really hard, doing a lot of Mormon stories work. Um, overall, like, yeah, just really living, living a good life. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I saw the, those videos you and Matt were doing last weekend and they were fun to watch. <laughs> yeah, I wish we could have like, wouldn't that be fun just to like go like hide away in a bunker and just make dozens of videos with Matt Easton. Miss you, Nuanto. <laughs> Miss you, Matt. Yeah. Hey, Matt. Yeah. He's a, he's a riot. He's a good time. So any, any month where I get to hang out with Matt Easton and there was just a lot of amazing people at the Thrive Conference in, um, in Sacramento. And if anyone doesn't know, Thrive is like a post-Mormon community building, um, just like kind of gathering. We'll do bigger conferences, smaller ones. And we're trying to do Mormon Stories is separate from Thrive, but Thrive and Mormon Stories share like a lot of the same board members, just trying to do community building post-Mormon and stuff. So there's bigger ones. And then we did a Thrive Unite. So there's like 16 different cities all around the country and around the world that held their own little pods. And they brought speakers and flew them out and just had people who were leaving the church in Sacramento or Mesa or Seattle and had people fly out. So like that just happened last weekend. And just yeah giving people a lot of hope and friendship and stuff after they leave the church so i'm just really excited about all the stuff that has been going on so that's amazing yeah yeah it really is fun how often are, you, are, are these events going to happen or do you know um so the thrive events are we're trying to make them like very self-sufficient so we tell people the you know kind of the ideas of the organization through like thrive beyond religion dot org dot com dot com i think um and then people can just set up their own we're in their city so we encourage people to go find like the facebook groups and go connect with people in their city so it's up to those individual cities of like alberta and like charlotte north carolina of like those pods can do whatever they want and have as many events as they want but like the bigger ones, we had one in November that I hosted at the Salt Palace with like 1,500 people. Um, we had a Women's Day one with like 800 people in Provo. Um, and then we had a New Year's Eve one with probably 600 people maybe in Provo. That was super fun. That was like a gala. And so the big ones are probably going to be like three a year, I'm thinking. Okay. Um, and then they're just getting, I mean, so many people are like, they're leaving the church and they need community and it's just... Like we sell out all the time. We don't have any issues with getting people to come out to them. So that's cool. Like a lot of people are really interested and want to want to come out and people make friends and like get to meet your favorite podcasters and stuff. So it's all around. I'm just so happy. Like this is such a fun thing I get to be part of. So. We love what I'm loving what you're doing with it because, you know, leaving the church, it's such 
we know Mormonism is such a community, right? Yeah. Uh, community religion. And so leaving that, it can feel so isolating. And like, not only are you dealing with issues of who am I anymore if I'm not Mormon, but then who are my people if I've left my mm -hmm. people? And so these events are so important and I'm excited to see where they go from here. Yeah, yeah, right on. It's, it's devastating for anyone who leaves, you know, a high demand religion where your community, your sense of purpose was all built in. And we try really hard to not make it into look like anything like a new cult or anything like that of just, <laughs> you know, giving people like a space to make friends, but also um, just hear different speakers come in and talk about what helped them leave, what resources were useful to them, but really giving people like their own internal authority to figure out what their values are now, instead of any kind of like ex cult, like we do not want to turn this into any other kind of cult. So we want to give people a lot of, you know, intuition to follow what's right for them. So I just want to make sure to clarify that because people, people think we're starting like something new. It's just literally a platform. And the guy Clint, um, Clint and Jenny Martin, they're just kind of like wealthy philanthropist uh, business owners who said instead of investing in Apple, they're like, we're just going to invest in the ex-Mormon community because they know how devastating their faith crisis was. So they just, they put down the money and it's at a loss. Like Thrive operates at a loss. Like they've lost probably $40,000 because it costs so much to rent the Salt Palace and they never wanted to make that up in tickets. They wanted to keep it affordable. So it's like, yeah, they'll front $40,000 just to get the tickets low and people to get out there. So it is it's everything we wanted like the Mormon church to be in a way where <laughs> it's like not for profit, just people showing up, doing good, like living their values and stuff. So I'm really, really proud of, yeah, Clint and Jenny are generous. I'm really proud of everything that they're doing and that I get to be part of it. So when you ask how I'm doing, I'm just, I'm in, I'm in, I'm, a, I'm, I'm thriving. So sure. I hope other people are thriving in the post-Mormon life too. So. Oh, sorry. I cut you off. What did you say at the end there? Me? Oh. Yeah blowing i you, i can feel it off you the radio i'm not even high or anything you guys <laughs> high last night anyway. you're high on life i'm high on life yeah i was just saying it's called thrive and it's unfortunate that that shares like a name with like five mlms probably but because it's like <laughs> you literally you leave the church and you don't know if you'll ever be happy again and you you think that like if god and this structure gave you purpose in life you still have a lot of leftover conditioning that if you leave, you won't have a purpose in life. But what we found out is people literally can thrive more than they ever have post Mormonism. So I'm just, I am thriving truly. So. Well, should we speak about getting high a little bit now? Now that we're <laughs> the mushroom, the mushroom trip. <laughs> well, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, yeah, let's, let's talk about mushrooms. Let's do it. Okay. So uh, New Year's Eve. Yeah, I need I need so much feedback, okay? Because um, I, I don't. Know, but we'll. Do. <laughs> I've, I mean, I've heard so many things, obviously, and I I you know researched. I was like set and setting, set and setting. Okay, my kids were out of the house over over New Year's Eve. I got some mushrooms. I measured them out very precisely. I first ground them up and put them in some soup. I don't know, maybe that wasn't a good choice, you tell me, but I read on the internet that that's what they said I could do. Um, I've never heard of that. I just tried to ingest them without yeah. like having like, just, you know, chalking them back or whatever. Um, and so uh, about two or three hours in, I wasn't feeling anything. So we smoked a little bit of weed from a joint that we had. And then I felt like I was, I had a vision that I was at the, the steps of like a green emerald city and my husband love him so much he deals with a lot of depression and anxiety and post-mormon trauma and guilt and all kinds of shit so when he gets high he gets very emotional and so his his trips are usually like 80 percent like cry fests and stuff and he gets a lot of his little emotions this is all too much information but he was crying like the whole time and that's like not a good set and setting for like wanting to go. <laughs> so I literally felt like I was like, I was closing my eyes and I was giving him a hug. And I was like, Aaron, I am on the steps of a green emerald city right now. And I have the choice to either walk up these steps. I'm high as fuck. All right. But I'm like, I can either walk up these steps or I can get up. Would you rather me get out of here? And he's like, yes. And I was like, okay. So I had that vision. And so what I did instead was just, we listened to some music and laid down 
and I just contemplated. Sam Shelley told me from Zelf on the Shelf, she told me that like you should go into a mushroom trip or that, no, that, that it helps you be a lot more honest with yourself. Do you guys feel like that's true? Like you, you see your truest self and like all of the bullshit, all of the facade is broken down. Yeah. And so I was like, what's the truest thing that I need to discover right now? And the truest thing that I discovered when I was kind of meditating was just the idea that I make a lot of excuses for why I can't do things. And I realized that there's like a saying that excuses are just lies. <sighs> excuses are lies wrapped in reason, I think. Mm. You know what I mean? And so I realized how much I had been lying to myself about the reasons why I can't do the dishes, the reasons why I can't respond to this email, the reasons why I can't do all of the things that make my life a little chaotic. And, um, if I could just get those things in order, my life would flow a lot better. So another reason why I'm glowing and I'm happy is because I look, I've since that mushroom trip, I've just been able to directly look head on if I can find myself making an excuse for something. I go, oh, I was like, is that actually true? Can I not do that? Or is that a legitimate reason? Or is it just a lie wrapped in reasons that's getting me to like, you know, go off on the trajectory of what I want to do and stuff. So I was like, I don't want to be a liar to myself. So I've just head on looked at all of the things that I need to do in my life to get things in order. And I think that's the best thing that I got out of the mushroom trip. But did I go anywhere else special? No, that's what, that's what I got out of it. I feel like that was a very productive journey. Was it? You even, though you, even though you didn't have a lot of visuals besides the one, <clears throat> first of all, I wonder, and I don't know if this is true, but it just came to mind. I wonder if by putting the mushrooms in a soup, it may have cooked them a little and maybe that affected the potency. I don't know. The soup was, wasn't too hot, but I know what you mean. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the other thing is when you consume mushrooms with food, it also affects the potency. So usually, um, I know myself, I like to fast for like four hours beforehand and then maybe drink some lemon ginger tea, which can help aid in the... Oh, the what's in the lemon tea? ginger? So I literally just slice up some ginger, put it in some water, boiling water with squeeze of lemon and just let it like soak and boil for maybe five, 10 minutes and then just drink it. So like make your own tea. Okay. You guys are going to like record this and like, this is going to be somewhere I can go back and double check my recipe. <laughs> yes, and then is well, there, what's, what, what, what aid does it have? Like what effect does it have to set up the mushrooms for potency? So I think it's something about the properties of the lemon and the ginger combined that just somehow activate the, I don't know if it's a psilocybin or whatever. I've just heard it from multiple places that lemon and citrus can activate the magic mushrooms and also mm -hmm. eating them on an empty stomach. Um, they digest a lot quicker and they get, I don't know, they just work better. Cause usually I try not to eat until I know I'm like coming down because it mm -hmm. does kind of slow the effects once I start eating. Um, and then also, I still think it was a really successful trip because what mushrooms do, they have the ability to kind of pull you back to a bird's eye view where you realize your whole life, like what you're doing and why you're doing it. And then you're like, that's so dumb. It's not even that complicated. Just like you <laughs> exactly. were saying, yeah. that's like totally, yeah. <laughs> totally normal for mushrooms. They just, yeah. they pull you back like out of the third dimensional reality and make you go, oh, that's not as difficult it need, as it needs to be. And so right. I think that's actually a big success, especially if you've integrated it into totally. your life. Like, I think they did what they needed to do, at least for the first try. Yeah. Okay. Totally true. I'm wondering, is there a possibility? Because you know, sometimes when you're high, whether it's marijuana or what else, that you think that you're being really honest with yourself and I'll take down notes and I'll take down videos and I'll have a conversation with my husband and I'll check them the next day. And I'm like, is that, I feel like I was trying to be too honest, but I actually, I was saying things, I was going too far in things that I actually don't believe. Do you know what I mean by that? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Like I was going too far. Like for instance, I had one like a uh, therapy coaching session with Sam Shelley again from Stuff on the Shelf. Anyone who needs life coaching, she's in the mushroom. She's the greatest. And so I was having a lot of chaotic thoughts a couple months ago, um, and felt like I was like addicted to dopamine and work, and was having a hard time slowing my life down. 
And I felt like that was going to destroy me because I was just all the time working. And I was like, I, I, Sam will help me out here. And I did just like a two hour therapy coaching and we went over my problems and stuff. And she told me to take, I don't know how much was in it though. She told me to take some mushrooms and a chocolate thing mm -hmm. before yeah. I came over. So she's like, this will help you solve all your problems. <laughs> and so what I thought was really funny was like, I thought we, we accomplished a lot of things in the therapy session, but I actually thought that I was too honest. But what I mean by that is like, I was like, I was, I was, do you know what I mean? Where it's like, honesty has a, a bearing and I was actually trying to get into things where I actually don't know if I actually believe those things. I was talking about um, just the people in my life and my feelings and my sexuality. And I was like, maybe I was exploring those ideas, but I wasn't believing those ideas. But because I was on mushrooms, I was more apt to want to be as honest as possible. And I was like, maybe I actually wasn't. I was just had a commitment to being open, but not necessarily. Is any of that making sense? It's making total sense. Okay. Okay. Our, like, the importance of integration afterwards. Um, and first of all, I just want to say, I don't think you did anything wrong. I, I think the mushrooms are just interesting. You know, like I've had, tr I've had journeys where I've taken a lot and didn't get any visuals. It didn't go anywhere. Indeed. I've taken somewhere, I've taken a little bit. And then all of a sudden I'm like, whoa, I'm like, I'm in it. And so they have this trickster energy that you just, you know, you don't really know sometimes. And so in true Mormon fashion, a lot of times we go, oh, what did I do wrong? I did something wrong. <laughs> Like, no, just like enjoy the ride and see where it goes from there, right? Yeah. Integration is really important because I think a lot of times you feel like when you're in an expanded state of consciousness that you can leave that experience being like, the mushroom said this and I've got to do this. Or, you know, I had this experience or saw yeah. this and I've got to do that. But, you know, a lot of it, you even, we're talking about like with the Emerald City and stuff, a lot of it's very almost like a dream, kind of like what does it mean? What's the symbol? What's going, you know, uh, you have to, sitting with those images um, and not making any drastic life decisions yeah. for afterwards is probably a good idea. Really sit with it. <laughs> it's their approach to. That's so funny. Yeah. So I would, I would say that I think mushrooms have a way of exploring your unconscious mind and exploring your unconscious mind without the barriers of limited beliefs and things that we're programmed to see through, like this lens that we're programmed to see through our entire life. So it kind of removes that lens, it dives into your unconscious. And so you have this ability to search within yourself things that you normally wouldn't be able to or didn't, don't even know are there. Exactly. And so right. when you get to those points, and then you come back to your lens, you put your lens goggles back on and like you're back in reality you kind of have to decipher, okay, what, what are the breadcrumbs that I want to follow? Do I want to go down this path of pure honesty with myself or whatever it is that you discovered about yourself? Does it still make sense for you in your like everyday life to kind of go that direction? Or maybe you want more clarity on it? Or maybe you just sit with the idea for a while before you like Mike said, before you act on anything. But ultimately doing what resonates and knowing that sometimes you're just like purging all these emotions and ideas that have been buried so deep in you for so long, right. that they don't necessarily have to mean like your whole life is going to change. But it's just like about getting these ideas out and in the open. That was like gospel truth. Like <laughs> <laughs> things that are buried. I mean, like leaving Mormonism to me means just like deconstructing 100 different things and you yeah. don't know what you don't know is buried until you yeah. have like some other vehicle to and a capacity to be honest and stuff. So that, that was so beautifully stated. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> to give one example of that, some a listener once, once reached out and they were talking about how uh, she was sitting in an ayahuasca ceremony and she had this vision in this ceremony that like of her leaving her husband and breaking away from that. And, um, and, you know, you could easily leave that ceremony being like, I've got to leave my husband, I've got to go. Mm -hmm. But it could also be just like that symbolism that like, maybe you're too enmeshed in your relationship and you need a yeah. codependent. And so that visual is more like, you need to be your own person. He needs to be his own person, but it doesn't mean you need to leave him and divorce him. And, you know, that's something that that's why integration and, talking about it and having someone to talk through with it or a community, a support group, super important in these. Yeah, I really believe in like, like I was saying with deconstruction and Mormonism, it's like taking apart a Jenga puzzle. You don't need the, the puzzle of your marriage, whatever that is, whatever that, that 
represents. I don't need to take out this and then knock it over and take the puzzle piece with me. Like, yippee. I need to look at it from all the sides and all of the corners and actually deconstruct and look at things that I never looked at before. And I totally, I think that that marriage example is perfect because yeah, you can get yourself in this zone of like putting too much symbol, too much, uh, uh, too much emphasis on what something means directly for you without actually being like, what is that trying to tell me? Yeah, I like that enmeshment example, so. Yeah. Well, it sounds like a better trip than I was thinking in the way, like you said it was- <laughs> I thought I was gonna go to the Emerald oh. City, but, and to be honest, it's, I really, the next time I am on mushrooms, I probably wanna do it alone. Cause I don't like having to feel responsible when I'm high for anyone else's well being, And maybe that was a mistake that my husband and I did it together. I assume that's how most people do it. Um, but I was like, I don't like having, that's my least favorite thing is, you know, someone harshing your, harshing your vibe, <laughs> killing your buzz. So I ended his, he gets super emotional. And so I was like, let's separate next time on, on just that <laughs> yeah. night. Not permanently. Uh, but, uh, Seth just um, mentioned find a guide. That's exactly what yeah. I was going to say. Is you don't have to do them alone, but do them with someone who isn't going on a journey that can kind of help you through it and take like a lower dose and just kind of be there to assist yeah. you without you feeling like you need to take care of them. Yeah. I'd let someone else take care of everything. And I have that experience. I've done a couple of guided sessions. And in those sessions, I've been able to go so deep. It's just like my body knows Ooh. that it can. Oh, am yeah. I breaking up? Only for a second. Okay. I relax and surrender. I, 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 my body knows it can surrender. And so mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a completely different experience in that way, too. Oh, Tanner's here, too. Hey, Tanner. Hey, and Tanner. Kyle's here, I saw as well. Hey, guys. Um, we're talking about mushrooms. So anyone wants to volunteer to be my guide and also <laughs> be my supplier? I'm going to get carted off to jail probably right now. I don't like I say anymore. <laughs> Now I'm all like hyped up. I'm like, I need, um, you just, I need, to, I need to go on, um, go get a guide and try some ASAP. So, Tanner yeah. sort of got you. Nice. We, okay, we, we, I, we know some in the, uh, in the, uh, in the Utah area. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> I have ideas of where to get it personally, but it's always just like, who knows? At the end of the day, like. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, they tend to show up. Once you put out the call, they tend to just show up for you. <laughs> On my doorstep? Awesome. Oh. Yeah, pretty much. Like, you'll be talking to someone, and then they'll be like, oh, I grow them. And you're like, oh, I need some. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I know a couple people who grow them, but with success, that's a different story. Like, <laughs> like enough for sharing? Who knows? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So funny. Well, all these comments here. Uh, anything else before we wrap up, Shalise? Um, yeah, anything else you want to? Um, I loved everything you guys said. You're giving me so many good pointers for my next one. And we can have another recap in a month from now, maybe. Ooh, are yeah. you, are you going to come to the solstice event? I don't know about it. And I would love oh. to if you're there. So what, tell yes. me everything. We will be there. Mike, do you know the dates offhand? June? It's right. Whatever the weekend is right after the solstice. So it'd be like the 24th, 25th-ish. Um, of July or June? June. June. Yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah. Up in Utah. yeah I just want to see if some of the details. Let's plug it real quick. Cause... Plug. It. Yeah. I mean, uh, we did it last year with the Divine Assembly. And it was like a burner event, music festival. But this year, it's going to be more family friendly up in Eden. There's going to be camp spots. We're having our own camp. We're going to do like an enchanted forest fairyland type of camp. And there's going to be some like ambient music and activities from other camps. And it's like a three day weekend thing or two day, two day thing. Anyway, it's going to be a lot of fun and you should definitely be there. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, I want to not bring my kids, but I definitely want to go. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm not bringing my kids. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be unrestrained. Yeah. Yes. That, that sounds amazing. Okay. If I look at where, if I look at the website or like your website or where will the details well, be? Mm, Adrienne's on the call and she's going to type it in right now. I bet you, um, Adrienne. So she says June 24th through the 26th and what is it? The revival festival.com. I don't know. Adrienne knows. I bet she's going to say it. Um, revival festival.com. 
I, uh, don't quote me on that because I'm not for sure. But I bet Adrian has it. Yes, Cutler Flats, Campground in Eden. I think if you look up Divine Assembly, you should be able to like follow the rabbit hole. Ah, summerrevival.org. Thanks, Adrian. Summerrevival.org. That's the one. I'm literally making post-it notes. <laughs> or enchanted oh, forest. We're gonna have fairies and wizards and all sorts of fun. fun shit. I'm gonna I'm gonna have the funnest summer ever. If you ask me how I'm doing, I'm just trying to fast forward until the summer, till that, and then I have a lesbian wedding I get to go to in LA. Hooray. Yes. And then oh, we should meet up. We're in LA. Yeah, we should. Okay, next time I go to LA, I'll be in LA in May. Um, and then, do you guys know John Larson? Know of him, at least? Yeah. yeah. John Larson, Mormon Our Expressions podcast. John Larson is one of the reasons I'm here. Today. Yay! Okay. <laughs> All right. So, me too. But, like, yeah, like, fangirl, right? And the fact that I get to, like, work with him is, like, act cool, Kara. Okay, be cool, right? He just moved to a different state, which I think everyone knows. He lives um, in Oregon now and bought a bunch of property and is like wants to live sustainable off the grid and has like animals and farmland and is growing his own stuff and just wants to be out of this capitalist structure that's about to collapse anyway. He's the coolest. If, do I want to join his commune? Yes, but that's not what he's doing. The point is, <laughs> he invited me over this summer and has a yurt as his guest house. And I was like, nice. I will walk there. I want to come so bad. So this summer is going to be like the best summer ever. Just telling you. And that sounds like the perfect commune to <laughs> on, you know? I know. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Sign me up. Tell him we would love to chat with him on our podcast. I sh okay. Yeah. Post a note to myself. Yeah. Text John <laughs> to go on Mormons on Mushrooms podcast. I'll have to fanboy energy a little bit, but I can do that. It's fine. I have yeah. fangirl energy every time. He's funny. I smoked a bong with him. He, I live in Conwood Heights, and all these years, I didn't know he lives literally down the street from me. My brain exploded. And oh, wow. I only got to hang out with him one time before he moved to Oregon. Well, his whole house was packed up. But I did get a smoke a bong for the first time in John Larson's basement. Thank you. My ex-Mormon initiation <laughs> was complete. You know what? I have, I've never smoked out of a bong yet. It was, it was pretty nice. All right. I'm going to try that. <laughs> Don't that. Solstice. Somebody's got to bring a bong. That seems oh. weird. It'll be there. Well, Kara, we can't thank you enough. Thank you so much. This is so oh, fun. Thanks, guys. Let's yeah. like, want to come on and give another, do more of these. These are, these are fun. Yeah. yeah so good. And John I agree Martin with you. is the goat. He is fun. the goat, isn't he? I mean, Tanner, <laughs> Tanner's a close second, though. Tanner. Yeah. yeah. Tanner and Sam are one of the main reasons I'm actually here. Tanner and Sam. Sam and Tanner. John Larson. John Dolan. John Lillian's the reason why I pay my bills. Love him too. <laughs> all these content creators, bless them all. Well, thank That's you everyone. Too. This is amazing. I love it. I love chatting with you. Love catching up. And yeah, we'll thanks guys. On our on our feed. So, and I think we're going to figure out a way to start posting them on YouTube and maybe even making this like a little podcast episode too. Well, I don't know. We're trying to figure out the technical, but okay. So. Yeah, this is like a mini podcast episode. You could put this up on your feed. Yeah, yeah. If you do, let me know. All right, we will do. Cool. All right. Okay. Bye. Have Thanks, guys. Day. Bye. Magical Bye, Friday. everybody. And these things. Oh, stay X. Oh.